Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to send a Kerbal on a flyby mission to the moon and back of course. But uh, I wanted to check the contract screen to see if there was anything that we could pick up. Uh, I guess science data from space around the moon uh, should be a thing, definitely. Uh, orbital station around the moon probably is beyond us, especially since it's a facility supporting at least eight Kerbals. That's, well, I mean, we could think about that, but la uh, later, later. Not with our current rockets, surely. Uh, unfortunately, quite a lot of these contracts are getting a little bit ambitious. Uh, build a new surface outpost on Duna, Mars in other words. Thankfully, they gave us quite a lot of science and tons of funds for that, but I don't think I can pick that up just yet. We're nowhere near that. I sp <laughs> the outpost must be on wheels, that's great. Uh, I don't even know where Minmus is. I keep forgetting. I, 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 I noticed at some point where Minmus is, but I keep forgetting where it, where it ended up. It's certainly not in orbit around Earth. Uh, so, uh, interestingly, the satellite contracts are ridiculously lucrative. I mean, you take a look at the Geosync one, there's more than a million, and uh, it gives you some science. The Monia one is uh, pretty much a, uh, more than a million, and uh, again, a little bit of science. So uh, those are oddly lucrative, as, and we, but we've already done it. I, I don't want to pick another one again. So that would be redundant. New orbital station in on a solar orbit. Uh, it, the, the trick is, these are very lucrative. And then you've got these orbital station ones, like uh, orbital station around the moon, or orbital station around uh, in solar orbit. And in terms of funds, they don't get very much. In terms of science, they're huge. Uh, so, but the, I would, well, I mean, I, I guess we're pretty good on funds as it is considering the cost of our rocket launches. But, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing. Now, we do have a lot of science, so let's pop on over to the R&D building to see what's what there. Okay, so here we are, and there is a bunch of possibilities. And I guess we could pretty much get the stuff that's highlighted highlighted already. I don't really know where all the lines are actually going so let me just sum it up and see if we can just uh, get the stuff that is available so 50 that's 90 140 uh, 190 altogether and then 280 so yeah we can afford everything uh, I guess I might as well just go for it I, I don't see I can't plan with this thing where I want to go anyway probably I didn't need the aircraft stuff um, alright let's take that and let's take that well, this is interesting. Am I sort of at a dead end or something? Oh, cannot. Re oh, these are over a hundred science. Okay, so it was it was a good plan. These are all only unlockable if I upgrade the R and D building. But taking a look at what we've just unlocked, uh, you can see I've got uh, the service propulsion system for the Apollo mission, the F one engine. So we're we're all the way up to Apollo now with all the technology necessary for that. Uh, if you remember my previous Realism Overall series, I never got to un unlocking the stuff needed for Saturn V. Uh, that was my goal, and I just couldn't get there. Now it's like really early. <laughs> it's like really fast. We've even got a Nova stage. Wow. Uh, the Saturn C8, which would have been uh, potentially the next thing, the, the Mars version of the Saturn V, the Saturn C8. Um, so yeah, serious stuff. Ah, one of my favorite vernier thrusters. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we need any of it for now. Uh, maybe to do some of those really lofty missions. Uh, keep in mind, I've, I've dumped some parts, and so we're gonna get some of these, uh, glitchy textures on parts that I, I'm not gonna use anyway, like this C-130 cargo bay. I have to go into the configs in order to get rid of those, but I'm not gonna bother right now. Uh, otherwise, everything looks good. What the heck? Airliner control systems from Probodobodyne. Okay. Well, we've got some strange stuff. So let's just uh, head on over to the VAB and load up our rocket to send a Kerbal over to the moon. Okay, well, here it is. And it's a touchy business. We have to be on a free return trajectory. This does not have enough to do anything else. Uh, so we're gonna have to make that right. It's not got a lot of spare delta V. Again, it's going to start out 
uh, with the RL10 and then it's got its own service module system to continue afterwards actually uh, yeah I mean it's a little bit uh, reconfigured because we've got the control from the pod so we don't need the Gina avionics package with this part of the stage which is what we did with uh, the Rincewind of course we had the Agena with this part of the stage instead now the command pod controls this part of the stage and we leave off the Agena uh, in order to save mass so it'll go with the RL10 and uh, we've got a minimal amount of solar panel re. hopefully that'll be enough it's tough to say with the command pods drain the command pod has a lot of electric charge in it I think it'll be okay but it's tough to say exactly we've got more antenna that we than we need uh, clearly that's probably more for looks than anything else and uh, that'll be dumped off once we get over once we uh, try to re-enter I think that's all that's spoken for otherwise you know it's a simple command pod heat shield uh, you know we've got full ablator just in case and we tested that just attaching a parachute directly does not cause any problems so hopefully it won't do it here either otherwise uh, same basic idea Vimes M this time no no launch escape system that's sort of important because really none of these stages will be able to rescue the Kerbal if something goes wrong with our launch stage but then again the launch stage is the good old Telemon 5 which we have launched over and over and over again and uh, just a reminder it's actually uh, five LR-89s uh, the center one is still an LR-89 I'm not using the typical sustainer for the Atlas because it didn't have enough thrust so yep uh, but we've used this a lot of times before and so I'm hoping it'll still be alright uh, this is not the safest system but we'll have to try it out uh, certainly not going with Bill Kerman uh, yeah well we need uh, Kerbal inside in order to have sufficient avionics uh, who's this? Elliot okay we'll go with Elliot Haddock already has his uh, his star there so Elliot Kerman will have to be the guy and avionics is back to being okay all right let's see okay here we are but you know the drill we can't possibly be launching in daylight no no we need to make sure that with the tight fuel situation we have we have to make sure our relative inclination is spot on and that means time warping right through the daylight hours into the night but we have ambient light adjustments so I'll make sure that we can see the rocket okay I think that's close enough one little fact that I forgot to mention was that the light support there is a light support tank it is in the service module and uh, so uh, 24 days worth left for Elliot so it shouldn't be a problem doing this mission and getting him back in good time now I might not want these to deplete it looks like they're not depleting right now he's already consumed some food water and oxygen food especially looks like he's been snacking down while he's been waiting uh, so yeah it looks like it's not drawing from the command pod itself I need the supplies in the command pod to remain there uh, until his return right uh, through re-entry because uh, I can't transfer resources right now I don't think I think we could do with a little bit more ambient light here okay so SAS is on throttle is up Elliot looks okay everything is charged up and filled up alright let's get some distance from the rocket and let's go and launch okay roll program I believe our carbon dioxide scrubber is active, is that right? Well, let's activate CO2 scrubber. Not enough carbon dioxide. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting a plume now. Things are looking good. 
Elliot seems alarmed, but that's no indication of anything. Going to 70 degrees. Now, of course, after we do this mission, it's really a matter of either plan a, planning a flag on the moon or uh, sending something over to Mars. I think sending something over to Mars will be the, frankly, easier thing. Um, though it takes a lot of time. If it's a probe, I think I think we can do a probe mission to Mars. Assuming there's nothing particularly glitchy about the Martian atmosphere, of course, which in previous occasions there have been. Okay, so we're going through the stratosphere here. Should make it clear. This is where the ozone layer is. That's why we get the heating. There's UV radiation and all that going on. Uh, and it's the absorption of the radiation that causes this region to be very hot. It's not just our velocity. So, yeah, that's a thing. But anyway, we're, we're starting to go through it. We'll get through it uh, by 45 kilometers. As me on the comments suggested I should drop the boosters a little bit earlier than I'm doing, they should still be... Uh, I mean, generally when boosters are released, they still have a little bit of thrust to them. They're still lit. It's just that they are not contributing enough to compensate for their mass, so that so they are just released at that point. They're not fully flamed out when they're released. Uh, but I'm just a little bit concerned about doing that because because I don't want them hitting anything. And so that's the reason I don't do that. I do wait for them to be completely out. And in this case, since we're carrying a Kerbal up, I'm, I'm going to be extra cautious too. That's especially true of solid fuel boosters because their thrust tails off. With liquid fuel boosters, uh, hold on, I'm hearing bad sounds. What just happened? Does it still the separation as the decouplers? They just sort of moved. I don't know what that's about. These still read overheating. I really have to uh, reduce pitch at 45 here. I'm not seeing the stage time on the... well, that's the end of the boosters, alright. So I wasn't even able to see when they're likely to be done with. Now we've dumped those. We didn't lose anything, did we? Um, oh, strut connectors burned off. Huh. Okay, so we lost some strut connectors. Struts. <laughs> Just call them struts. Okay. Well, that's a little bit worrying. Almost had a little bit of an issue there. Well, do you know? Crude space flight is, is a tough thing sometimes, and hardly an Apollo mission occurred without there some, being something that went wrong. It just so happens that things that went wrong weren't fatal. And of course, in some cases, they very nearly were. But through great effort, we they avoided fatalities. Okay, well, the profile generally says 30 degrees here. No fairings to drop. Uh, I'm gonna lock the HTP tank up here. We don't need that draining unnecessarily. 
Okay, we've flattened out as much as I intend to. Time to apoapsis is going up, but that's nominal given that we're gonna need some time for the RL10 stage to burn. And we've got about 15 seconds left in this stage. Getting as much out of it as we can. I think I'm getting complacent though with this rocket. We need to develop a new rocket, so I'm not quite so sure of myself. Okay, here we go. And ignition of the RL10 stage is good. And we are proceeding. Now remember, after this stage, we'll be dumping the controller, the, the Gina. And so we won't have this full 0.25 drain here. We'll have much less than that. As it is, we have three days worth of battery life here. And that is pretty good. So again, once we get into orbit, we are aiming for free return trajectory as tight as possible, but I'm, I'm not going to rule out uh, just making an adjustment over at the lunar end in order to get it uh, into Earth's atmosphere. I think that's probably okay. Mm. Looks like we have to pitch up. Our trajectory wasn't quite as good as I would like. I suppose our payload, as it were, is relatively heavier. Yeah, this is pretty bad, looking at it. This is very not nominal. I'm not saying Elliot's in any danger, but this is not the situation I wanted him in. We should have... Uh, and it, I tried for a steeper angle on ascent. It's a good thing the atmosphere is only at 133 kilometers or so. And if it was high, like it has been in past versions of realism, uh, real solar system, uh, that would have been a problem. I mean, actually, Elliot would survive that. Uh, he would just have to come straight back down. No transfer to the moon. Wow, we're really getting getting close here I'll wait until periapsis is above 130 135 let's say well okay it's getting a little bit out of hand alright okay 304 by 135 really bad orbit only okay because we gotta transfer immediately well actually well yeah I think we can transfer immediately Probably didn't even need to shut down the engine. Well, that's a weird free return. Maybe we should go once around. We'll get a better free return if we do. Well, that, that'll do it. Coming for Apsis 103 on the free return. Uh, pretty high over the moon, 8,000 kilometers, but we'll get the science. Uh, we have the Delta V for it. Uh, but we have to go around once. How's the engine? Very stable. Uh, Smart ASS overcorrecting. Okay, forget it. I'll take it without. Oh, shoot. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but okay, let's go for it. Uh, what I wanted was caps lock, not shift. Let's not have this tank do its thing. Or that tank. Tail one should do. This is a bit early. I guess with all our funds, we should definitely be unlocking the buildings. I'll check up on that after we get Elliot back. Well, I guess we're getting the most out of the Oberf effect, but... Still, not, not exactly the place I wanted to be at. Next time we do this, we'll have to change things up a bit. But it looks like we're getting out of the RL10 stage here. Okay, well, actually we could expend the rest of this, can't we? But uh, it takes too long. Alright, set. 
and start. And I have to unlock the actual tanks. Hold on, let me throw this down there. Okay, so our electricity is balanced now. That's funny, because I'm sure the pod drains some. And in fact it is. You can see it here, 0.28 drain. So uh, actually, Fusebox is not telling me the truth here. It's 14 minutes, this stage, so yeah, we are going to have to go around. But we'll, we'll spend as much time as we can here. So there it is, that's the spacecraft, that's the Vimes-M for Moon. Should be L, right? Luna or Lunar or whatever. But anyway, it's it's M. Okay, so, well, it's sort of a slow and steady re wins race sort of situation, but we've got some other problems. Tank life support says the electricity remaining is actually only one day and 21 hours. Now again, we do have some solar panels, but it's not enough if the electric charge consumption is really that much more than I expected. So that's a little bit, that's a lot concerning. Elliot might be in the dark or something on the way back. That's not good. Anyway, I think uh, at this point I'm going to shut down and we'll go around and do a second burn since we're deviating from where we need to be. Let me replot. Well, we'll say 552 is safe enough. And on the moon side, well, 2847 was better than we had it before. So, it's getting tighter. And then if we decide we want to get the moon side even tighter, we can adjust later. But I don't think I'm going to go that far. As long as it's a pass over the moon, I'll count it as a flyby. This is our first attempt, after all, and it's already gotten a little bit messed up. But anyway, we have to go around. It's a wider orbit, so he's got a long time. Four hours and four and a half hours to wait. Yeah, I'm not getting a great feeling about the whole recharge thing. This thing ought to have a fuel cell or something. Well, hold on, let's deactivate. Um, deactivating the scrubber doesn't do anything. Uh, it's got 0.25 draw, and then I, when I activate it, does 0.26. It's like, yeah. Not the electrical system we're going to need to turn off, actually. We're going to go to the moon, Elliot, uh, but you might be a little bit cold on the way back, a la, you know, Apollo 13 or something. So, well, we've learned something about planning for a moon mission, that's for sure. Don't trust Fusebox. Why Fusebox isn't counting the capsule's charge drive, no idea. I mean, the only thing that's not, well, let me include reaction wheels. Well, doesn't change anything, really. If I include reaction wheels in, nope. Nope, it just completely ignores the draw from the pod, or the life support system, whatever it is. Should have put more solar panels on, obviously, now. These don't actually have any power draw, but just for good measure, this is the life support tank, by the way. Right in the middle of the two tanks of toxic fuel, of course. Where else would you put it? Okay, long burn is long, but we're coming to the end of it. Probably some adjustments will need to be made, but the main problem is electric charge. We are now down to 85% of our total battery, and it's just... I just hope it doesn't cause any problems. Well, I don't want to go more than 3,000 kilometers away from the moon, so I'll, I'll call it there. We'll be a little bit loose on the Earth side, but that's fine. 
we'll do another burn in order to uh, to tighten that up. Uh, perhaps a mid-course plane change will help get closer to on both sides. Well, it does, just a little bit. I guess we'll do it. Well, it's not like we have any reaction wheels on here, so all control is RCS based and I don't know if I don't think electric charge is necessary for RCS. Let's let's test that theory. Let me do shut off the electric charge there. And RCS let me take off caps lock. Yeah, well, RCS works fine without it. Okay. So we can maneuver and we can certainly light our engines. Maybe I will have to turn off the battery, but we'll we'll keep it on until we get to make course plane change here. Okay, relative inclination is zero, and now we're coming in still high over. Well, we're about the same on both sides. We're about uh, 2,985 kilometers on the moon side. 2,645 kilometers on the Kerbin side after that. Okay, well we'll have to do a minor burn on the moon side in order to bring down our Kerbin side. We can only do that at, I mean unless we want to lift our periapsis, we'll have to wait until we pass periapsis to make that adjustment. Okay, 403 meters per second of delta V left. Alright, we'll do the trick. Electric charge is off. Elliot is conserving power. Carbon dioxide build up. Let's uh, activate electric charge. Allow the CO2 scrubber to run for a little bit. Um, doesn't deplete the carbon dioxide that much, huh? Just sort of prevents it from building up. But lithium hydroxide, we see, we seem to be understocked on that. Well, okay, Elliot, you're just gonna have to vent the carbon dioxide out. Okay, here we go for our loop-de-loop -loop around the moon. Certainly, we do not have enough delta V to get into orbit around the moon. What we can do is crew report. Okay, crew report while high over the moon. Um, let's transmit the, well, yeah, I guess let's transmit the science in order to fulfill the contract. What? Oh, uh, right, I have to unlock the, <laughs> there we go. Funny, that's in, it, it hardly consumes any electric charge anyway. I think it consumed one unit. Okay, we got the 10 science and the contract is fulfilled. All right, so that is taken care of. Now, where is the hatch? There's the hatch. All right, uh, Elliot, can we EVA? Oh, no, we can't EVA you. We haven't unlocked that. Okay, so we transmitted the crew port there. Uh, all right, so we'll do one close to. Uh, well, I don't know how close to the moon we're actually going to get, and whether it counts or not. Let's see. Um, but if I try and get closer now, I'm just going to push my orbit further away from Earth, and we already have enough of a correction to do with our remaining delta V on that side, so I don't want to mess with that. Here we go. Take all those pictures quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, we're going back up. Now let's see, can we get a crew report here that's different? No, we're still high over the moon. Well, anyway. We uh, did our job, and now let's plot for a closer pass to Earth. At least our periapsis was on the lit side of the moon, so if there's ever any shot of getting some science, we got it. Yeah, that makes it worse. Okay, it looks like a very minor correction right now. We'll get him to 70, I suppose. Well, typically, previously, I had to get it to 65 kilometers to really 
get a re-entry from the moon so maybe I'll lean towards that sort of number okay well I don't need to fiddle around with the maneuver node I can just bring it down oh, okay despite the privations caused by his lack of electric charge Elliot seems to be in fine spirits what just happened oh these these need electric charge to light right 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 that makes sense Oh, that's too low, but uh, I can correct the rest with our RCS. Alright, let's say 67.4. Let's see how that works out for us. Alright. Alright, there's Earth. Elliot, get back to it. Oh, uh, yes, let's uh, put you in hibernation on the way. So bad planning in terms of the electric charge and possibly the lithium hydroxide as well we will need to figure those out a little bit better before we try and land on the moon that's for sure okay carbon periapsis seems to be a bit lower now that's not right RCS RCS What is it, 67? Okay, that's about right. Okay, we're all set again. Oh, what? What? Oh, no! Ah. I thought the carbon dioxide could be vented. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, in previous uh, attack life support stuff, that carbon dioxide could be just vented out. But it looks like with realism overhaul, ah, uh, we've killed Elliot Kerman. And actually, we weren't packing enough lithium hydroxide for him to have survived anyway. Oh, what a tragedy. There's no way to test that except with putting a Kerbal in. Well, I mean, unless you take a look at how much lithium hydroxide... I guess, I guess in the VAB you can see how much lithium hydroxide the CO2 scrubber will take. But based on prior experience with tank life support, I thought that the general case was that these things didn't actually uh, kill the Kerbal. It was just vented out, but it looks like we've got the the tragedy that Apollo 13 managed to avoid, and so we've got sort of an inert can coming down to the KSC. I don't believe we have any control over it now. I wouldn't think so. We don't have any controller. Not enough crew. Well, all we can do is uh, have... Elliot's remains return to Earth, and so that's what we'll do. But uh, we can't separate the crew module, uh, the service module, sorry, the service module. So that's a bit of a problem. But I guess there is no more fitting end for a Kerbal than to uh, simply die in flames in the middle of re-entry, right? We are currently approaching the atmosphere in completely the wrong attitude. I'm not, I don't suppose this thing is going to flip around on its own, is it? Ah, uh, this is horrible. Many flaws in this mission. The struts burning off during ascent, bad trajectory on launch, uh, electric charge uh, not enough lithium hydroxide for the co2 scrubber I can't uh, say anything I can't turn SAS off SAS is still engaged I can't control it this is uh, the RP0 thing this is because of the avionics I believe so it's still doing its thing it's just that the because I lack avionic control I can't tell it to stop 
Now we're going up actually. We, we've uh, sort of bounced off. Well, I suppose that makes sense with the lack of drag. We weren't pulled all the way down. Yeah, we're still, uh, we still got a substantial apoapsis there. Wonder how long it actually took for the carbon dioxide poisoning to set in, because we were, we were full up on carbon dioxide for quite a while. I don't know what the duration is before the Kerbal actually dies of toxicity. As it is, it'll uh, be hitting the atmosphere again nose first, unless it can flip around. Okay, out it goes. There's that retrograde marker that we actually want to point at, but no luck there. Sort of pointed straight down. Maybe it'll go to, towards retrograde. Nope, it seems to be turning towards prograde. It'll be going in those first. Well, next time I'm I'm still thinking clearly complacency was a problem here. Next time I'm thinking that uh, we need to have a new launcher that will test from the start and then we can create a more robust a capsule and service module system that will have all the supplies that are necessary and then then and only then after we have a much more much more complete system then we can launch a Kerbal to the moon again and fulfill this project. Hopefully then we'll also have a contract to do it though I'm sure our reputation has taken a bit of a hit thanks to the loss of Elliot. Looks like the command pod is relatively cool compared to the parachute. So at the very least, Elliot will get an appropriate Kerbal demise, not floating aimlessly in space, uh, but instead bursting into flames. Okay, first explosion. Explosion happened. Uh, insufficient avionics. Yeah, well, obviously. Uh, parachute is overheating. I I wonder. Hold on. Let's see what 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 actually went. Uh, okay, it's uh, actually the joint between the reflectrons, and then they burned up from overheating. Okay, aerodynamic stresses. Well, they were on there pretty pretty weirdly, so I agree but now the temperature on the parachute is getting pretty extreme okay that was the parachute Funny how it starts to tumble once the parachute is off and the, well, I guess the flat surface of the pod would do that. But anyway, uh, such was the, the demise of Elliot Kerman. And yep, uh, we will strive to do better in the future, but this was a great disappointment on so many levels. And uh, so uh, with that, I'll leave you and I'll say thank you for watching. If you, uh, if you could tolerate this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.